Hello everybody, uh, Kevin here. Uh, if you guys have been around my channel for a while, you guys would know that I used to do actually like a video series about basics. Don't, I, I mean, I thought it was like a good concept, but your boy did a video on basics for socks, talking about how great Fear of God socks are, like, wow. So I've essentially condensed basics videos, except I'm going to make this a little bit more practical. I'm going to be talking about good, reliable basics um, from a variety of categories in my wardrobe that I've personally used for a while, still have, or wear regularly, or maybe even all of the three. I'm going to be talking about the basics that I have that are good, reliable, and I'll try and have a wide range of price ranges um, just so that I know that like well I'm a college student right now I can't afford like the crazy expensive like $200 $300 jackets um, so I'm gonna be like kind of trying to be a little bit more lenient depending on like where everyone's financial situations are etc so let's start excuse me if I have my phone out and I will also be having um, sort of like a quick fit um, on body either on the screen or I will put a timestamp in the description um, as well as a pinned comment down below in case whatever post editing or post production Kevin uh, decides. So number one is going to be the Amazon Essentials Basic Tee, uh, the regular slash like boxy fit. So I believe it's $6.25 per tee. They come in a pack of two. So this is a relatively cheap basic t-shirt. I do have a few pros and a few cons. I will start with the pros. The pros, cheap. Uh, $6.25 for a decent feeling tee. Um, I personally really like it. I've used it um, for the past few months. Uh, I was a little bit hesitant initially when I got it because I got the regular fit. I think I got like two whites, two grays, and two blacks. Um, and I initially didn't like the fit. So the regular fit, I liked how the upper body fit, but I didn't like how the lower body fit because it just fit a bit too long. Um, so I ended up like not really wearing it too much. And when I did, I would tuck it inside my pants, um, kind of to have like a tucked shirt look. But recently I was just kind of like, this would be perfect if I took off like an inch or an inch and a half. So I ended up cutting like an inch to an inch and a half off of it and then it kind of gives it a more vintage kind of frayed look. I personally like how it fits a lot now. It's pretty much my go-to black t-shirt right next to my Uniqlo Alexander Wang t-shirt. Um, that one, the Amazon um, Essentials Basic Tee, I like it. My only, um, I guess like one of the cons is kind of what I mentioned before where I did have to alter the fit a little bit where the upper body fit great, lower body was a bit too long so I cut off like an inch or two. Um, depending on it, I went true to size for it so um, the medium fits in between a medium and a large. I liked slightly oversized but I did have to shorten it a little bit. Um, another con would be I... It might just be like a personal con, but the, I hate how some black t-shirts gather lint so quickly. Um, like this is one of the t-shirts where before I wear it, I have to pretty much um, de-lint it. Just go over it with like a lint roller. Um, I personally haven't had any issues with like pilling yet, uh, but it could be an issue. Um, but yeah, those are my two cons for it. As well as, I mean, it's not very sustainable. I have to be honest, you're buying a t-shirt. Um, if you can find a vintage t-shirt that fits like this, I don't know how that's even possible, but yeah. Next up is a Muji basic t-shirt for $7. So the Muji basic t-shirt is essentially everything that the Amazon t-shirt was, except it is organic, uh, slightly more pricey. Um, the edges will be finished for the Uniqlo, or not Uniqlo ones, for the Amazon ones. The edges on the bottom that I shortened are a bit frayed. I personally like it, some people might not, but this one is just finished. Yeah, like one of the weird things about the Muji t-shirt is it, the sizing. The sizing is weird as well as it shrinks. So I got an extra large. An extra large because when I initially got it, which was quite a while ago, I sort of wanted an oversized fit and I got that oversized fit even though I had to size up a little bit because um, the oversized fit, the extra large fit like a large pre-wash. But post-wash, it fit in between a medium and a large. 
Thank God my style did sort of change or I didn't really want to wear like super, super baggy t-shirts anymore. Uh, so it fit perfectly into it, but you have to make sure that you size up at least because post wash, my Muji t-shirts always, always, always shrink, maybe up to like a full size. So I think it's crazy. I think it's like absolutely nuts, but um, I would size up as well as it still has that lint issue, but not as bad as the Amazon ones. I still do have to go over it, but it's not as bad. My last t-shirt that I'd recommend would be the Raining Champs t-shirt for $65 per each. I know that's a huge gap, but for the Raining Champs t-shirt I've had for maybe four years now, maybe even pushing five years now. Still great, still feels amazing. I am getting small holes, but like, I think I got mine second hand on Grailed for like maybe 30, maybe 40 bucks. At retail, it's 65 for a brand new pair, but for a used pair, I got like 30 bucks and it fits amazingly still. The fabric, it's hefty enough to where you can wear it kind of just as a traditional t-shirt or you can wear it as an undershirt. Um, and there's a lot of tech that actually goes into it, whether it be the fabric that's woven in it or like the anti-odor stuff that they have, etc. I think Raining Champs really does the athletic leisure athletic leisure um, genre correctly where it's still a comfortable fit comfortable material yet has those little minute details that make it almost um, athletic or tech in an interesting way so raining champs t-shirts I'm sure their sweats are great I've had one of their hoodies but yeah great great brand and an honorable mention I would like to mention real quick um, uh, was the Alexander Wang Aerism T uh, from the most recent collection. I've had, I think I have like four t-shirts from them. I love, love, love their t-shirts. I believe retail was like $14.90 or something like that, which is a little bit pricier. Um, I'm sure, I, I think they went on sale for like $7 or something like that, which is crazy. Um, but I believe they're out of stock now. If you can, find them either on Grailed or at your local Uniqlo shop. Uh, they might be hitting the sales racks or just staying there. I like how they fit. For that, I went a small because I kind of liked a little bit more of a form-fitting t-shirt. And especially in California, this is going to be used maybe three-fourths of the year, either as an undershirt or as just a t-shirt in itself. Love the fit. Um, that one never, never, never gets any lint on it or I haven't had any issues with pilling yet. So I can recommend that wholeheartedly. So for bottoms, bottoms, uh, number one would be vintage Levi's. Uh, vintage Levi's can range anywhere between like maybe 10 bucks, 20 bucks, all the way up to like a few hundred, depending on like the fit, the age, the stressing, all that other stuff. But if you're looking for like a no frills type of thing just go to your local flea market or your local kind of thrift store and pick up a pair of vintage levi's and you can even either customize the fit take it to your tailor that's an additional maybe 10 15 dollars 20 dollars but it's definitely cheaper than some of these other brands that are going to be charging 200 300 dollars for like a washed pair of jeans. So I think you can easily recreate or make something even better because a lot of vintage Levi's are already broken in and the cotton just feels very soft to the touch. I would like to give a shout out to my friend Dante. Um, he runs a small like vintage store on Instagram slash grilled. I believe it's called Airship. I'll put um, the Instagram handle somewhere over here as well as his handle. Uh, like somewhere on the screen as well as in the description down below hit him up He has a lot of cool vintage finds and he's always grinding close friend of mine Shout out Dante. I personally like the fit of the 501s um, My only thing is that like I did get my 501 slightly tapered because I do like a slightly slimmer look um, You just have to talk to your tailor and just tell them to make sure to like keep the um, the fabric that's either on like the outsides that's visible and only take within, which might be a little bit annoying to them, but then obviously um, if that's important to you, you can do whatever. Number two would be the Uniqlo Easy Dry X cropped pants, I believe that's what they're called. Um, that one I currently don't have in my closet at the moment, but I have worn them a few times, but I've given them to like friends, family, etc. I do have sort of like an alternative to it that Uniqlo doesn't currently sell, but the fit is very similar to it. Um, this is just a quick, easy way to get breathable pants that fit very well into like a street smart aesthetic. 
and a look for it as well as I think the build quality of Uniqlo is second to none, especially for the prices that they're charging as well as the sort of look that they achieve. Uh, for $39.99, I think this is a pretty good deal, in my opinion. I highly suggest you either go to your local Uniqlo store or you order it online, try it on, and then if you don't like it, return it, obviously, um, see how it fits on your body. Um, I've heard plenty of good things that I'm sure entering into spring, summer, this is going to be definitely more valuable um, for a lot of people as we get closer to the warmer months. Last but not least, it is the APC Petite Standard. Um, this also includes the Petite New Standard depending on which fit you enjoy. The Petite Standard is more of a slim fit um, as well as the Petite New Standard is going to be a bit more of a skinnier fit, so depending on like which you prefer. Uh, they had an amazing, amazing, amazing sale, uh, which I think when this video gets posted, it might be over or things might be sold out, where I believe their jeans were half off, like 125 instead of like 250 which I think is like, holy shit, for the petite standards. Uh, the petite new standards I don't think went on sale because that one is a little bit more of a desired um, product. But the petite standard, the one that I'm going to be wearing is going to be the jound pair. I have both the raw as well as the, um, the stone wash. Um, both of those, I got them shortened a little bit because the petite standards and the new standards, they do fit a bit long. So in my opinion, get them shortened, but hold on to the extra fabric because that extra fabric um, you might need for either crotch repairs or kind of like repairs if you get like pockets blown out, etc. So definitely hold on to those. What I like about a APC is that they aren't extremely expensive um, for at least the quality proportionately and you can wear them for multiple, multiple years. Um, I know friends that have had the petite new standards for years and years and years, uh, especially the raw pair. In my suggestion, um, I would say only commit to purchasing the raw pair if you're willing to put in the time, the effort, and if you're wearing, if you're willing to wear the raw pair for multiple, multiple, multiple months at a time, um, as well to break them in and really get that custom fit, because the stone wash fits pretty good straight out the gate, and it won't necessarily stretch too much, so it should have a little bit more of a comfortable feel on your body. While the raw initially will be very um, rough, stiff and maybe airing on the side of uncomfortable, but after a few wears, and the more you wear it, the more comfortable it'll get, as well as it like kind of stretches in the areas that you need them to, so it's not going to stretch anywhere that doesn't, so it's a better form-fitting one. So the APC ones can go from either 125, like the sale that they had, anywhere up to like $280 for certain pairs, so definitely check on secondhand, or if any websites are still doing like winter spring sales check them out next up is going to be outerwear so outerwears um i guess i will start off with uh so i'll start off with uniqlo i just recently had the opportunity to purchase a uniqlo u fleece jacket for 14.90 i had that's ridiculous i believe it retailed for like 80 or 90 dollars that's crazy it was just like a return um, Uniqlo jackets, I think, are really, really well made, regardless of whether or not they are completely on sale, like $14.90, like, that's crazy, that's how much I paid for a t-shirt, um, from Uniqlo, so that kind of makes me go, like, what am I, yeah, like, what am I even paying for? So Uniqlo outerwear, I think, is amazing, I have, um, the Engineered Garments Fleece, as well as Uniqlo U Fleece Jackets, um, both of those jackets, I think, I think the Engineered Garments are off for retail, which I think is still a fabulous deal especially for the material and the type of textures that they offer, uh, very unique. I also think the Uniqlo U stuff, very stylish, and you're essentially getting um, either like an Hermes or a Le Mer piece for cheaper. Um, obviously the materials aren't gonna be as nice, but the design um, language and the design key points are still there. Those like Uniqlo jackets can really range depending on what you want as well as which line you want whether it's a collaboration or whether or not you're buying for resale or from resale etc but i say the price range is anywhere between like 25 30 dollars all the way up to 150 so to each his own see which one fits for you and if you're not lucky enough to live in a location or close to a location with a unique look near you kind of like myself i'm currently in san diego i only got to visit the unique when i was 
home visiting friends and family, um, then order online. Um, make sure to keep up with a lot of their sales, a lot of their items, and um, see if you'll find anything lucky. Next up will be Patagonia. Patagonia has amazing jackets, uh, fleeces, um, whether they be purchased secondhand or at a thrift shop or they are purchased on their website themselves. I think Patagonia themselves are an amazing company because they're very dedicated to like sustainability as well as making sure that products last a lifetime. Um, like I talked about very briefly on a few of my other previous videos, Patagonia, if your jacket or if your fleece or any item from them uh, breaks, um, they do have a lifetime warranty where they will replace, you know, either zipper or um, kind of take care of the jacket, uh, fleece, let's say breaks beforehand. Um, you might just have to pay a small fee for them to repair it, but the fact that they are still willing to repair it rather than leave you in the dust until you purchase another jacket, I think that's kind of comforting to hear from a company that is in one of the most wasteful um, industries. I've talked about the vintage fleece bomber jacket that I have millions and millions and millions of times, so I won't ramble on too much about it. Love the feel, love the fit, love the price that I got it at. And I think I saw one on Grailed for sale for like 60 bucks and I might pick it up. Check it out, Patagonia bomber jacket, something like that. So last but not least, one of the, I guess, most reliable jackets that I've had previously is just an old school, like vintage school kind of like varsity jacket. I think those jackets pretty much last a lifetime with how much heft, how much weight they had. I think I had like, like a varsity jacket from like, I don't remember whether or not it was like the Dodgers or the Bruins or something like that. I currently don't have it anymore, but it lasted me like super, super long. I think it was like eight plus years. And I definitely am thinking about purchasing another varsity jacket basically because of the fact, and I'm not sure whether or not it's a varsity or, a, or like a letterman jacket, but like one of the two. I really, really enjoyed having those in my wardrobe because it can either fit very, it can add like something to like a very plain basic outfit, or you can have that kind of fit into like the flow of having a more preppy, more um, school-esque as well as normcore type of look. You can definitely flow it into that. Um, I personally really enjoy those types of jackets. I currently don't have one at the moment, but from experience, loved it. And okay, for footwear, I would say for footwear, if you're looking for a very cheap, reliable sneaker, I would say the Vans. Vans, I personally like the authentics more than the old schools or the style 36s more than the old schools. I've had all three versions. I mean, plenty of them, um, but I would say I like the look of the authentic. Um, if you can get the Vans Volt, if you just want the look, just get the normal ones. Um, the Vans Volt will last you longer um, as well as they come in more unique colors as well as materials. So the authentic OG LX or whatever they're called, I like the look of them. Um, I like how the sole, a lot of the time, they're more of like a cream rather than like a very pure, pure white. Um, I think that lends itself to a little bit easier to a lot more wardrobes. I would say wardrobes or outfits. Um, I previously had an asphalt gray pair. I've had the dress blue. I've had the chili pepper or the habanero pepper, like whatever the one they're calling it. Um, those guys, I love those authentics. Style 36s are, in my opinion, very underappreciated uh, compared to the old school. I think the Style 36s, because of its slimmer look, I think it can lend itself very easily to something that is a little bit more street smart. So go for those ones instead of the old schools if you can. A shoe that I think is critically, critically underappreciated, I've talked about it plenty of times, is the Reebok Club C. The Reebok Club C, it retails for under a hundred bucks for a lot of the pairs and even the collaboration pairs with nice leather, they don't push over 120, 130. I will link down in the description a few pairs that I personally think are amazing for the price. Uh, there are some collab pairs that I think are just like very tasteful. Um, I think the Club C itself, very clean, very minimal. I don't think it needs any extra embellishments 
anything like that and it's not going to be super hyped people aren't going to be like crazy but it fits well as well as it's very reliable for how much you're paying um, I believe the OG Authentics um, that I previously talked about range anywhere between 30 to 75 I think the Reeboks anywhere between 80 all the way up to 150 maybe even more depending on certain collaboration pairs um, as well as um, they go on sale a lot of the time I think the materials plus the look plus the reliability of the Reeboks make it a great 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 addition to any wardrobe last but not least I think a footwear item that in my opinion um, a lot of people are overlooking are a lot of new balances especially the new balance 990 series um, the 990 series you don't necessarily need to buy every single collaboration pair if you just buy the normal pairs there are a few Instagram pages that sell like vintage 990s for like under a hundred dollars they're still reliable pairs you can look on grail you can look on all of that I think even some collaboration pairs they might be going for under retail or at retail um, I think Stray Rats recently released um, a Joker collaboration. They did a gray pair, which I'm wearing right now. Personally, really like them. Um, as well as a blacked out pair. The blacked out pair, I think, is going for at retail or underneath retail, which I think is nuts. Um, so I think you should check those out as well. Um, one can only pray that Jound or... Uh, New Balance re-releases their collaboration pair so that like literally everybody can get it because 100 pairs clearly wasn't enough given that none for sale and those ones that were for sale were like a few thousand dollars so I'm just like so those would be I guess my suggestions for wardrobes I don't necessarily think you guys need suggestions for socks I don't know why I even made that video um, but those would be what I would suggest as like a good simple wardrobe I know it seems a little bit norm core and a little bit too basic but I think within each of those kind of categories and um, those products that I did talk about and that I do have you can have like certain unique pieces whether it be like you can get like a unique U long coat that's like you know also has block tech depending on if it rains a lot you know and then make sort of small tweaks like Patagonia stuff you can maybe not even get like a Patagonia fleece but maybe get an engineered garment fleece or the JW Anderson fleece um, and you can kind of customize um, your wardrobe make small alterations because I think rather than having something that um, or like an outfit that like really shouts whether like you have crazy colorful pants crazy shoes, crazy tops, that's a little bit too extra, but I think having one or two highlight pieces in each of your outfits, I think that really leads to a little bit more sophistication, um, as well as it allows you to wear more, um, more outfits in a smaller amount of clothes in your wardrobe. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, happy New Year's, happy 2020. Um, I hope you guys had a great New Year's. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.